you're, both of you are deeply immersed in the day-to-day -day side of it. You're also thinking long-term. I'd love you, for you to look in your, into your crystal balls. Let's say we have those next to the fire here. Uh, where do you think your projects are going to be in 10 years? Um, anything on final investment decisions the audience is wondering that uh, you can share about us um, second phase, third phase, and onwards? Um, so 10 years from now, um, I'm confident we will have delivered thousands of cargoes of LNG safely and responsibly to our customers around the world, and we will have proven what you can achieve in BC. I, in terms of phase two, um, we are actively in discussions with, with our partners and with governments and, and other stakeholders on phase two. We do have a fully permitted plant for phase two that would replicate phase one, but we are conscious of the environment we're in and we're always striving to do better. So we have spent a lot of effort and engineering to look at is it feasible to move towards electrification? Because that is the next step, would be to electrify our, our compressors, which are the main kind of heart of the plant. It, it is feasible, but right now that power and that quantity is not available in Kitimat. The transmission capacity is not there. Not there. So as that capacity becomes available, it is feasible for us to start up our plant with gas-fired turbines, which is just like phase one, which is the lowest GHG intensity of any plant on the planet and then improve upon it once we can get that electricity. And if we can find a way to do that in a cost competitive way, I'm confident uh, we will. And, and in 10 years, I, I hope as I stand on our jetty and look at our ships sailing out, that I look around the corner uh, in the Douglas Channel and see ships sailing away from the Cedar facility and, and hopefully other facilities in Canada. I, it will be a shame if LNG Canada is the last big project. I hope that we are paving the way for the next wave of projects. Final comments and predictions from you, Devin? So uh, 10 years from now, um, I look forward to be operating safely <laughs> and reliably, and that's uh, you know what the, our communities expect um, and our customers expect. But in addition to that, um, we have time um, between now and the potential next phases of, of the project and otherwise to change the demographic of our workforce to more closely resemble that of which the communities we operate in. Um, we've often focused on contracting opportunities with Indigenous partners and otherwise, but really transitioning our focus to transforming communities and transforming our workforce. Um, and I, I look forward to seeing um, those leaders uh, lead the next uh, projects going forward. So. Thank you so much for both of your insights today. This has been a great conversation, and I know Sarah is keen to get us off the stage. <laughs> uh, be sure to follow both of these projects on social media, and you can find me on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you so much. Thanks, Margaret.